everybody. Um, so I have here a, a Hisense uh, dehumidifier. This is a uh, 95 pint, I believe it's 95, let's see here. It says yes, right there, DH95. So it's a 95 pint um, dehumidifier that I'm going to attempt to fix. I've only had this about maybe a year and a half, and it's supposed to put out, you know, 95 pints a day in terms of sucking out the humidity out of the basement. We uh, had a basement flood a couple weeks ago, and and I turned it on, and it works just a little bit, but after a whole day of running, it only getting a uh, about a pint, maybe two out of it. And uh, I, I'm at, oh, down here in the basement, at least almost 60% humidity still, and, which is pretty high. So generally what happens when dehumidifiers go bad is the either the filter here, um, this area, usually gets plugged up the fins and um, and, and and to where that it doesn't uh, work it doesn't suck the air in or um, the compressor that's down in here um, is losing its freon and I believe that it's losing its freon because as it's running I get right in here and I get a large ice buildup that generally means that it's low on Freon. So I'm going to take this apart and see if I can't uh, uh, fix this. Uh, I'm going to put a bullet piercing valve on one of the, the suction lines and then attempt to uh, uh, recharge the compressor. Um, this particular compressor takes uh, R410 uh, refrigerant and uh, um, I'll probably do another video or, or two with uh, putting the bolt piercing valve on as well as the uh, refilling it. Um, so in order to take this thing apart here, we've got a, a number of screws here. There's three on the side and then there's a couple on the back there and up top and then down on the bottom and then same on this side. One, two, and three. And then also in the front, when you take the uh, the bucket out or water holder, um, in here are a couple more screws. We've got uh, there's one right up in there, one here at the bottom, a couple there, and here. And then it's a matter of trying to separate the case without breaking the wires or anything like that to the controllers. So. Um, I'll start taking this apart and, uh, and see what we end up with here. Okay, so let me get the screwdrivers here. I got a, uh, Phillips screwdriver here. I'll start taking... Part. Um, probably want to be careful to as they come out to see if some are longer than the others. All look to be about the same so far. I've got a towel under this table just to uh, to. Uh, so the side ones, side screws are just a hair longer than the, the back ones, so I'll probably keep those separated. Inside. Got a towel just underneath there so that uh, if there was any water in there that uh, it would catch you on the towel.
it looks like there's a good one, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, about eighteen screws here. Alright, so I believe I got them all out. Let's see if I can turn this side of you. Yeah, my blanket's all towels all. I'm gonna take these screws, set them. Over here, so they don't get lost, and then uh, all right. So now, see if we can take this apart. Um, I believe that on the sides here, there's like little kind of a latch. Oh yeah, there's like little latches kind of hold the front and the side together so you can grab the bottom and just kind of with a screwdriver just go along the edge here and try to loosen those up without breaking the, the little clips off There it went. Okay, so looks like as you can see up in there, we got got a some of the wiring that's caught under hooked underneath the the little clips so let me see if I can pull those out so that I can turn this I don't wanna don't wanna pull end up pulling these wires out of here um, so maybe I'll just set, set it like that And then see if I can decipher here. So this is the compressor right down here. This is the cooling um, core. And then right behind it, maybe it'll go this side. Right behind it here is the, um, once the Freon comes in here, it cools it cools this front cooling uh, core and the the moist air attaches to to these uh, the fins and creates little beads which drop down into this tray similar to like when you have a uh, an ice filled cup the outside um, condenses and the water drips down the side and as the freon goes through um, this core it it ends up getting um, heated up and then it goes into this core which um, has a fan behind it and this fan sucks the hot air out and it blows it up into the room to dry it out and then um, uh, it turns from a liquid through here into a gas and then comes back down into the compressor and into the compressor it uh, it pumps inside this little compressor um, is like a little piston pump and it uh, compresses that gas uh, back into a liquid which then circles back in and through and the fins actually look pretty good here they don't look uh, super dirty hard to tell if there's a leak here somewhere um, it is kind of dirty on the the side here let me see if I can, can show you over here um, it is a little bit dirty, uh, green, and, and I don't know if that's an indication of, of leaking or what, but uh, um, it's possible that, you know, one of these, right, maybe one of these is, is leaking just a little bit. Usually there's a, uh, the green is generally an oxidation, it just happens with copper and water and, and stuff like that. I 
chemical reactions, but there could be a, a leak somewhere in here. Usually there's a discoloration. So yeah, this side's all all blue and this side is all silver, which could mean it's somewhere along in there. It could be just a, a hair pin hole of some sort that just is a slow leak. So anyways, that uh, that's uh, the disassembly part of it. I'm going to then um, uh, put a bullet piercing valve probably on this line here. This is the cooling line, which or suction line, which which goes into the cooling area. And this here is the high pressure line, which once it comes uh, out of this uh, secondary uh, core, it's hot, super hot. You can even tell by the by the uh, uh, coloration of the copper. It's it's got multicolors on the copper, and some of that could be from where they soldered it. Um, but usually, this comes out pretty hot, and it comes back in into here and then back into the top of the pump. So I'm going to like turn it on and uh, see if I can if I can tell uh, anything. So let me just uh, see if I got a long enough extension cord to plug it in here. Looks like I'm gonna have to get an extension cord. So um, extension cord here. I'm going to turn this on and oh it's not gonna I gotta put the uh, in order to turn it on it's gotta have the the filler bucket in there. It's got a little safety switch there. Let's see if that works. Let's see if we can tell anything. The compressor is running. You can feel the uh, can feel the uh, refrigerant coming into it here, nice and cold. There. Probably put the bullet piercing valve right in here, I think. Probably take a a few minutes for it to pump up and start to freeze. You can, you can see it is starting to freeze up here on the sides. Let me get my camera in there. You can see right here. Uh, is starting to freeze up there. So So, I mean, it is, it is, looks like it's working there just a little bit. Every time you touch it, it uh, kind of thaws it. But uh, where it's low on Freon, it should be, it should be getting cold on these other side of these fins, and it's just, uh, it's not. It's going in here and then kind of 
zigzags in, and usually um, I was getting the build up. This whole end would build up with ice and across about five, six inches, just right in here, um, would build up. Anyways, um, this basically is the you know opposite of an air conditioner. It's got the same same makeup. It's got a compressor, it's got a cooling uh, core, and then a core that takes the heat away from the refrigerant. Um, Well, that's uh, that's kind of what it looks like so far. So um, I will I will uh, in my next video. Um, that's what's wrong with this one is it needs to be recharged. Um, the pump works good. Usually, if the pump doesn't work, it has a plug in um, right up in here where I hope you can see that. Right up in here is where. Um, the water comes out of its tray and into into this pump area, which fills up the, the, the I guess you'd call it the bucket or the water tray. And, uh, and then uh, hooks into a line here, which pumps out into your sump pump hole or, or wherever you do it. All right, so that's, that's kind of how you take this particular humidifier apart and, uh, and to troubleshoot it. Um, pretty simple, pretty easy. And uh, well, thanks for watching. For watching. I'll do my uh, next video. Will probably be attaching the bolt piercing valve um, to uh, this line here, the larger one. Um, and uh, and then we'll refill it. I ordered uh, Freon online and uh, so it'll be here in just a couple days. Alright, thanks for watching.